Welcome guys, my name is Ricardo Pereira and today I'm going to show you how to connect with external database. So don't leave and learn Mendix with me. Alright, so let's start by going to the marketplace tab and search for external database connector. Click on the first one and then select the button download. Here you can select the option add as a new module and click to import. Click OK and now go to your module, right click on it, go to add others and select the option external database connection. Here you can give a name to your connection. So in my case, I'm going to write LMSDB and I'm going to select as a database type MySQL. But you have the other options and you should select the one that fits better to you. So in my case, MySQL. And here you have two options. So use the connection details such as a host, port, database name, username and password or you can use the connection string based on the JDBC connection format. In my case, I'm going to use the connection details. So as a host, I'm going to write this string. You should write the one that is related with your database. As a port, I'm going to write 3306, the default port of my SQL database. As a database name, I'm going to write LMS, username, admin, and then you can also write your password, and then click to test connection. So if everything went well, you will see this green check, like the connection worked. Now you can click to save, and it should open a page where you can create your queries. As you can see, I have more than 100 tables on my database. So most of them are tables from the MySQL and others performance, schema, etc. But I only have one related to LMS and we are going to work with this one. So for the first query, I'm going to give it a name. So get all persons. And here we can write a select statement. So select all from persons and click to run query. So if everything went well, you will see the response data. In my case, I have 24 results, but you should see what you have in your Table. Now click to use response and here Mendix will show you a response structure. So this is all the attributes that I have on my table. So Mendix converted to an entity with these attributes. You can set a name for this entity. So in my case, I'm going to change it to person and click to save and create entity. Click OK. Now you can save and go to your domain module just to check if everything went well. So if it's created, perfect. We can go back to our database connection, create a new query. So this time we are going to create one query to update some values. So let's write update first name. And here we are going to write update, then the name of the table, so persons, set first name, so you can see the name of my attributes right here, so first name equal to, for now I'm going to just write Ricardo, where and now we can use, for example, the person ID or the first name. So, for example, we can change 
all the entries that have the, the first name as John. So we are going to replace John with Ricard, or we can just uh, specify a person ID and change it. So in this case, I'm going to use a first name just to be possible to, to do a mass update to our table. So where first name it's equal to, and we can use as an example, John. Okay, so we can just run the query, just make sure if it's correct. So two rows affected. In this case, if we use this inside the microflow, it will change. For now, we are just uh, testing if the query is correct or not. Okay, so this query will work, but we want to do something dynamic. So let's change the card and insert curly brackets and then write, for example, first name two. Click here to add parameter and then copy the name we just add here. So first name and like this, we have one parameter. As you can see, when you filled all the information, including the test value, the color of the parameter will change to green. So let's do the same for the first name on the where clause. So we can write curly brackets and then first name from add a new parameter. Just copy this name and use as a, a test value John. Let's run the query again, just to make sure that it's correct. As you can see, it is. And now we can save our query. So click to save. And as you can see, currently we have two queries saved and we can use it inside the, a microflow. So click to save the project. Go to your page. You're going first to get all the persons from the database. So let's use data grid to just drag and drop to your page, double click data source, and let's use the microflow select. Let's create a new one called yes person underscore get from DB. Click OK. Click to show and click OK again. Now click OK. And here we are going to start by going to the properties, roles, and select the one that you have on your module security. And now go to your toolbox and search for external database and drag and drop the one that says query external database. Double click. Select your database and here you can select your query, in this case, get all persons. You have the option to return a value. In this case, we are going to retrieve all the persons. So yes, list name, we can just change it to persons list. Click OK, right click and select to return as a value. Go to your page, double click on the data grid. Let's add a few columns. So select one attribute, for example, the person ID. Let's add another one for the first name. Click OK. OK again. Go to your domain model. Double click on your entity. Go to access rules. Select new. Click on your user. Allow to create and also to delete objects and give permissions to read and write. Click OK, OK again, and let's test this functionality. So click to run locally. So click to view app. You can just do the login, MX admin password one. And then here you should see all the records. So perfect. Now let's try to use the second query to update all 
the records that have the first name John, for example. So let's go to the studio again. Go to your home web page, double click on your data grid tool, and let's add one more column. So custom content, select any attribute. So for example, person ID, you can just leave the caption empty and click OK. okay again. And now on the last column, you're going to call a microflow. So we can just search for call and then drag and drop the call microflow button. Let's create a new one. So new as a microflow name, you can set as ACT person update first name and select the person as a parameter. Click OK. And now we can double click, click to show, go to properties and give access to your user role. Now go to your toolbox, search for query, and then drag and drop the query external database. Double click, select your database, select the query update first name. As you can see, we need to fill these two parameters. So first name two, we can set as Ricard, click OK, and first name from, we are going to use the name that is on the column that we, we are going to select to update. So person, and here we can just write first name, click OK. As an output, we are going to get the number of affected rows. You can choose if you want this information or not. We are going to keep it as yes. Click OK and then go to your toolbox. Just drag and drop a change object. Double click. As an object, select person. And here, just click to refresh in client. Double click on the error that is showing you in your console. Double click on your data grid. Go to personalization and set the hiding as no and click OK. We can also change the name of this button to update first name and click OK. Click to run locally, save and continue. Click to view app and as you can see now we have one extra button. So soon we click on the update first name button. It should update the first name of the road that we click to Ricard. So let's try update first name. As you can see, it's changed to Ricard. We can also do for other rows, and as you can see, it is working. If we update our page, we can see that this change was committed on our database. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to leave the like and I see you soon. Bye bye.